I thought the Supra was supposed to be the juvenile delinquent, but I mean, let's do manual mode. What is that? Hey crew, I've got the key to that 23 BMW Z4 M40i. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first, let's check it out what looks on the inside and outside. The only noteworthy changes for 23, there's an M Sport pack that's standard on the entry-level S Drive 30, and some new paint colors, not including this San Francisco red metallic. What makes it San Francisco red? Not sure. Up front, we've got yet another interpretation of the kidney grill, this one very squashed and wide with black gloss surrounds for the M40i. Optional 50 years of M badges, ironic given this is not a full M car. Beneath that, we've got functional ducts around the front air dam. There are more functional vents here on the side to the heat exchangers and brakes. Above that, with the premium pack, we've got adaptive full projector LED headlights with LED turn signals. Moving to the side, we find a set of upgraded 19-inch wheels with a two-tone finish wrapped in Continental Sport Contact 6 summer tires, 255 section front and 275 at the rear. Within those wheels are upgraded M Sport brakes with blue painted calipers. We've got functional vents behind the wheel arches, black mirror caps with the premium pack. This one has the moonlight black fabric roof, a little iridescent look to that. Stepping back to look at the profile, pretty traditional Roadster proportions. This one has defined creases on the side that take your eye from low to high. Let's see what it looks like with the top down. That's better. You buy this car and you live in a place like Southern California, your top needs to be down like 95% of the time. Here at the back, we find some slender LED taillights with turn signals, bit of a duck bill going on for this integrated spoiler. M40i badge off to the right, and then some faux ducts on either side with a gray painted diffuser and two trapezoidal exhaust finishers. I like the rear end of the Z4 and the profile. The front though, is it too friendly? Is that what I don't like about it? Here's my question for you. What generation of either the Z3 or the Z4 looks the best? Let me know in the comments and let's check out the interior. Opening up and looking inside at this black Vernasca leather and Alcantara interior, that's an upgrade with the blue contrast stitching. The front seats are heated as standard. You get these M40i tread plates, aluminum accented foot pedals. On the doors, there's more blue stitching with leather up top, suede inserts, padded leather for your armrest, and injection molding down low. Your trunk release button's down here. Doesn't pop it up though, wish it did. Inside, we find 10 cubic feet of space, not bad for this class of car. And of course the seats don't fold, but you do get a pass through right there. To close up the trunk lid, there's a handle on either side of the latch, comes down easily. Looking once more at the door, we find two positions of memory for the driver's seat, one touch windows, power adjusting and power folding door mirrors. This model has an upgraded Harman Kardon sound system. See some of that ambient lighting showing up here. Storage pocket there. These M Sport seats on the M40i are multi-way power adjusting with adjusting side bolsters and a thigh extender. Dropping it down, nice and easy. Door close noise. This is pretty solid. I think I get some vibration from the window in its track. The steering wheel, the M Sport wheel, very thick leather wrap, feels great in the hands. It is heated, you get an M badge there. The paddles on the back, pretty good size, decent travel, but they're plastic backed. The tilt and telescope of the wheel is done manually, which I prefer much faster than the power operation. Digital gauge cluster is reconfigurable with the BC button. There's a head up display, stitched leather up on the dashboard. Here's a 10.25 inch touchscreen infotainment system. The last generation of iDrive, still responsive and has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Beneath the screen is a dual zone climate setup with physical buttons. Below that are more physical buttons for your media stuff. Neural finish volume knob, some gloss black here with a Z4 logo. You slide that forward to find a wireless charging pad. That's an option. USB-A port DC outlet, more gloss black here and all around here. It smudges, it scratches, it collects dust. I don't like it. BMW, I would rather have fake carbon fiber than this stuff. Just let it be known. 
Dial to control your infotainment system if you don't want to touch the screen. I like that redundancy. Buttons here for your drive modes. Under the stitched leather console cover, we find cup holders. That's where they are with a little bit of storage in USB-C ports. There's more storage in this netted pocket back here. And you know what? Let's fire it up and raise the roof. which is almost as fast as it went down. Windows coming. Okay, let's look at visibility. Good, good, good. Oh, that's a pretty big blind spot there. And you don't get standard blind spot monitoring, though it's available. The view at the back is good. My headroom at six feet tall is excellent. Got plenty of clearance there. That's the thumbs up from me. And the cabin overall. Yes, it's not as tech heavy and, and flashy as the new BMW models, but I kind of prefer this. Everything is very intuitive. The fit and finish is solid. I'm into this cabin. Let's take the Z4 M40i for a drive now. All right, let's fire it up. Excited little burbles on startup. And hello, crew, from the cabin camera. You know the first thing we have to do in this convertible is to lower the top. So let's do that. Press down here. And lift the lid. Quick operation there. Our drive mode selected here will begin in comfort, as we usually do and then click in on the side and press forward to go into reverse. That brings up a high resolution backup camera and we do have a backup assist feature that I can activate here, which will back us up along the same path we used to get in. Very handy. And then in and down to drive and away. We, look at all those beautiful Aston Martins. And away we go. You know we're going to kick things off with the world famous horn test. So let's do that. Yikes. Very sharp. Sharp note there. And the turn signal sound. Classic BMW taps. Powertrain. In the Z4 M40i, we don't have the 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder that you get in the S-Drive 30. We have the B58 turbocharged inline 6-cylinder that is shared with a few other BMW models, including the M340i. It makes 382 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque, routed through a ZF 8-speed automatic gearbox exclusively and sending power to just the rear tires. There is no all-wheel drive version of the Z4. Now, I feel it prudent to address the elephant in the room, which is that the Z4 is not an only child. It shares its platform and powertrains with the Toyota Supra. Unfortunately for the Z4, it is only left with the eight-speed ZF automatic. You cannot get it with the manual transmission that BMW gave to Toyota and then they fine-tuned and made it their own. And that's unfortunate to me because while this ZF8 speed is a fantastic gearbox, gearbox, it's velvety smooth getting around town. And then when you're getting on it with performance, it responds super well. I wish you had the choice to have the six speed manual from that Supra because if you, for whatever reason, don't like how the Supra looks, you didn't want a coupe, you wanted a convertible, but you still want the engagement factor, you can't have it with the manual. And that's just, it's such a letdown because that's such a great gearbox and I know it would pair well, it has paired well with the Super Platform and engines, which are what we have here in the Z4. Thankfully, as I said, it is a good transmission and in comfort drive mode, the throttle response is very progressive, but there's ample power to get you up to speed. These seats stood out, to, stood out to me right away as being incredibly comfortable. They just hug my body perfectly. You can adjust those side bolsters, find an excellent driving position for yourself. 
and cruise with the wind rustling in your baseball cap. Let's test out the turning radius. Solid. And then that B-58, which had been so quiet up until now, makes itself known with a little bit of extra throttle. Back to that wind noise momentarily. It is rustling the hair and it's creating some turbulent wind noise around the top of my head. That air curtain back here is helping quell some of it. And more than anything, I'm just, I'm enjoying the roadster elements, especially with this ocean view scenery. The ride quality is taut like a sports car should be, but it's well dampened. So harsh bumps aren't felt all that much through the seat. And you stay relaxed. Certainly checking the box as a roadster. How is it going to check the box as a performance machine? Let's find out with a real world zero to 60 test next. For that, I've got my race box set up here and I'm gonna need to make some adjustments to our drive settings. Into Sport Plus we go. I'll hit the traction button once to put us in sport traction. And then I move the gear selector over to manual slash sport. That will enable launch control. From here, I hold my foot hard on the brake, pin the throttle, build up the revs, and let go of the brake. Here we go. Slip it. It's like, it did a full pause because we had no traction. And that's why zero to 60 is five seconds. Let's, let's try that again. Still so much tire spin. There's 60 at 4.8 seconds. Yes, this is properly a rear wheel drive car that needs to get the tires very much heated up to see zero to 60 below four seconds. And that's what independent tests have seen but this is real world. So real world, your tires may not be super hot. You may get 4.8 seconds to 60, but you're also gonna get <laughs> some laugh out loud noises from this inline six cylinder. What in the world? Heard all the better with the top down. Listen to that overrun. So angry. And the mid range thrust is madness. Oh my gosh. Equally impressive is how easy it is to regulate the brake pedal and just smoothly come down from real speed. <laughs> I thought the Supra was supposed to be the juvenile delinquent, but I mean, let's do manual mode. What is that? The shifts are quick and the drama from this exhaust. is magnificent. I did not expect this from the Z4. I thought this was supposed to be the mature grown up choice, but that doesn't sound grown up at all. That sounds big kid approved. Now the Z4 M40i has yet to strut its stuff through a curb, but thankfully I know of one. So we're gonna use this up here for a braking and handling test. Gonna carry some speed. RS e-tron tailing me here, but hard on those brakes, good response. Enters neutrally, back end rotates with liftoff. Steering is quick and precise. Listen to that! 
and the limited slip differential divvied up the power and slingshotted us out at the end there. Let's go for round two here. <laughs> All right, so it's playful. It's way more playful than I thought it would be. It behaves with neutrality. It communicates with the body. There's just that little bit of roll, little bit of lean that you would expect of a roadster. It doesn't have the same structural integrity as a coupe. But it communicates magnificently here with the transmission left in auto mode. It held the gear exactly how I wanted it to, powered out of corners perfectly, took the curves with communication through the steering to a certain degree. This isn't like overflowing with feedback, but the weighting is just right. So I know how much resistance is telling me where the car is gonna give up the grip. And it being rear wheel drive, that's very, very important. Oh my gosh, so, so much fun. All right, it's, it's kind of loud here on the highway with the, the top off. So let's, let's pull off raise that lid back up, and then hop into the miles per hour word of the day. But before we do the miles per hour word of the day, now that the top is up, we should listen to the NVH level at highway speeds. And I need to quiet this up even more so the engine isn't the thing we're hearing the most. So we're at Eco Pro now and just coasting. So there's some wind noise here, as you'd expect with a fabric roof, but not bad at all. And the tire noise is mellow. And I keep reminding myself when the top is up how much more spacious this cabin feels than the very claustrophobic Supra. I'm really very bullish on how good this Z4 is as a short road tripper or even as a commuter. You don't feel like you're having to wear this car like you do the Supra. You can kind of just move around and feel relaxed in these comfy seats. The only thing that isn't great about being in here with the top up is, is that blind spot once again. So you're really having to rely on those cameras because you can't see things around your left or right shoulder with the naked eye. All right, word of the day for this 23Z4 M40i is deceptive because you look at this vehicle and I size up a lot of Z4s, not just based on the driver, but just I look at it and go, all right, that's not really gonna be that impressive. But from behind the wheel, this is very much a different animal. So deceptive means to give a false impression or to be misleading. And that's precisely what this vehicle can do, especially in this M40i guide, because it is a proper performance car. It is a proper sports car that just gives off this somewhat feeble or unassuming impression so that people might be convinced they can go and bully it around on the road and then it shows what it can do and just embarrasses them. All right, before we talk pricing and competition, let's go over the top speed and fuel economy. Top speed for the M50i is 165 miles per hour, while fuel economy is 23 mpg in the city, 31 on the highway, and 26 combined. The starting price of the S-Drive 30i is around $54,000. If you want the M40i, that is a $66,000 proposition. And this vehicle as tested is just a bit under 74 grand. Convertible competitors include the Porsche Boxster S that starts at $79,000. It makes 350 horsepower from a turbo four cylinder, gets to 60 in 3.8 seconds, has a top speed of 177 miles per hour and fuel economy of 22 combined. There's the Jaguar F-Type P450 convertible that starts at 76,000 bucks. It makes 444 horsepower from a V8 gets to 60 in 4.2 seconds, also has a top speed of 177 miles per hour and fuel economy of just 19 combined. Now, before I reach a verdict, I just have to say that I'm not really a convertible guy. So if you offered me a Supra with a manual 
or this Z4 M40i with the automatic, I'm gonna say super manual. But if forced to make a decision based on the competitors, I'll just say that the Porsche Boxster is gonna be the most purest sports car. It's going to be the best track weapon. You can get it with a manual gearbox, gearbox so it's the most engaging, whereas the F-Type is the most beautiful and it makes the best noises with the supercharged V8. Now you're expecting me to go, but you should choose the Z4. Well, here's the thing. My takeaway on this car is it's so much better than you would expect it to be. Personally, what I would expect to be looking at it. It's fun to drive. It makes good noises. It is quiet with the top up. And it does the roadster things well. It's comfortable, right? But if you want better dynamics, you're going to go get the Boxster. And if you want more of what, in my interpretation, a roadster is supposed to do, which is to look beautiful, be fun to drive, but to make great noises, then I'm going to choose the Jaguar F-Type. And really, if you want even better driving dynamics than even the Boxster, you're just going to go get a Cayman. And that's probably what I would do. Which would you guys choose though? Let me know in the comments. Would you go Boxster S? Would you go Z4 M40i? Would you get the F-Type P450 Roadster? Uh, or would you even go just get a coupe? Would you get the super manual? Let me know and I hope you've enjoyed this PUV drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. And I'm gonna give you one more good blast before I see you next time. Oh.